before we do the operations. Uh, I'll show you the handwork and I'll also show you the uh, calculator work. Okay, so f remember that uh, our matrices are uh, given in order. That's row by column. Okay, so the rows are horizontal and the columns are vertical. So rows and columns. So if I'll ask, in this first uh, matrix, what is A22? What is the value? That's a uh, second row, second column. So that's the second row, and that's the second column. So the value will be eight, okay? And here, let's say I have A12. That means first column, second, first row, second column. So first and then second. And that will be equivalent to 4. So these are the basics of matrices. Now, we will evaluate this. So we have our ordinal value here, 4 and 2. It means that we will multiply every element of B by 4. So this means 4, that's your A, that's your B, multiplied by 2, 7, 4, 10. And then we will subtract by uh, 2, A, that's uh, 4, 10, 4, and 8. Okay? And so we'll multiply each element by 4. That's 8, 16, 28, 40, minus. Do not multiply a negative. Even for vectors, we will multiply positive 2. And then after that, we will subtract. That's 8, and then 8, 20, and then 16. And of course, we will subtract each element uh, to the second element. So 8 minus 8, that will be 0. And then 16 minus 8, that will be 8. 28 minus 20, that's 8. And 40 minus 16 is 24. Okay? Let's verify the answer using our matrix calculator. All right. So our... Matrices are given by, so that you can see, whatever, all right. So first is, let's clear all so that you know how to use this. So go to your new matrix, you'll have your two by two raw, so it, uh, this we can use this. If for example, you have a, a two by three, you need, just need to add one, okay? So but because it's two by two, that's four and then four. And then 10, you need to be accurate here, otherwise you'll end up with a wrong answer. And then 8, then enter, and then we go to B. Uh, it's also a 2 by 2 matrix, so that's 2, that's 4, that's 7, and then 10. Okay, and our operation is 4B minus 2A. And it gives us the ones we have here. All right, they are the same. So you can either, this is embedded in your test. So if you, if you want to use this, it's fine. If you want to do it by hand, it's also fine. You should be able to get the same answer. All right, now we will go to the vectors. And then after this, I'll give you time to copy. Now the vectors are the same as matrix. The only difference here is that the matrix can have as much as rows at it wants. But in the vectors, there's only one by two matrix. Okay, so first is you have your one half B, so that means we will multiply B by one half, so that's three negative eight, minus three times A, which is negative six and four. Okay, so we'll multiply one half, that's 1.5, and then negative four, minus, now do not multiply a negative again, multiply by positive three, that's negative 18 and uh, that's positive 4, that becomes 12. Okay, so 1.5 minus negative 18 is just adding them. So that's 19.5. And then negative 4 minus 12 is negative 16. Now, you can also do this in the matrix. Okay, so if you clear all, then add a new matrix, but you have to subtract the raw because you only have a one by two matrix. You have negative six and four. 
and then 4, enter, and then your B is 3, negative 8, is also a 1 by 2 matrix, all right, 3, negative 8, okay, and then enter, and then we will do the operation, that's 1 half B, minus, this time you have to use capital letters, it matrices here are capital letters, 3A. And as you can see, it's the same as what we have taken, what we have obtained here. So you can either make use of the matrix calculator, it's there, so you'll be, you'll be fine. Bird is flying above and between Don and Tom. So there's a bird out here. I will draw a bird. All right, and this is uh, Don and this is Tom. All right, and Don's location from the plane is 50 degrees north of east. That means from east going to north. So from east going to north, that's 50 degrees. Okay, and then uh, Tom is uh, 74 degrees north of west. That means from west, uh, from north going to west. So this is uh, what it meant, all right? That's 70 degrees or 74. Okay, now they are supposed to be 50 miles apart. Now what it asks you to find is how far is done from the bird. I put plane, this is the bird. Okay, so, mm, well let's just put plane. I think uh, I meant plane in here, not a bird. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, now, uh, you're trying to find this, and as you see an oblique triangle, it, it looks like we will use sine law here because I have two angles. So if I have two angles, remember in sine law, we need to find the three angles first. And the sum of the measures of the interior of a sine law is supposed to be, uh, of a triangle is supposed to be 180. So we'll add 50 and 74. We will get 124, and we will subtract from 180. So it gives us like about uh, 56 degrees. So we need this angle because it's the angle opposite the side. Remember, uh, the word for sine law is the opposite, okay? So it, it means that if you have an angle, you have a side opposite that angle, which actually this, okay? So what we will do here, let's change our A, B, C, you still remember, all right? So it will be, this will be our B. Remember that a side is named by the angle opposite the side. And this will be our C. So it's B in terms of C. So we will use B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. And then we are looking for C, so this remains to be a C. The others we can plug in. Our B is 50 sine, and our B is 56 degrees. All right, uh, is equal to C, which is missing, over sine C, which is 74 degrees. Did you get that, Anjali? You understood? All right, now we need to cross multiply. If you still remember how to do things right now, okay, so that means C sine 56 degrees is equal to 50 sine 74 degrees, okay? And so therefore, to solve for C, because we're after that, we need to divide by sine 56. All right. And so therefore, we can cancel that. And so C is this value. Of course, we can use calculator now. Remember, okay, all those at home right now watching this, remember, before you do things in a Desmos, the Desmos that is in your... Uh, final exam are set up to a default of degrees, okay? But in any case, uh, for sine and cosine law, we are using sine degrees, uh, degree function. While when we are using circular function, we are using the radian, uh, the ra radian mode. So remember, set up your proper mode first before you compute using your Desmos. So we have now uh, 50 sine Okay, sine uh, 74 divided by sine 56. And that's the answer, 57.97. Okay, if it asks you round off to the hundredths digit, that's 97. If it asks you tenths digit, this becomes 58. 
Okay, I hope you know how to round off. So this is now 57.97 uh, miles. Okay, I hope that's clear. All right. You're asked to find uh, the domain and range of this. And because uh, the graph is not explicitly given, we need to graph it first. Okay, so let's go to the Desmos graphing calculator and graph it. So I really make an emphasis of this because of the exponent. If you have an exponent that's more than two terms or more than one term, you need to put them in parentheses like that. Okay? Minus four. And so this is the graph. Let's, uh, y equals negative four. So if you graph it, all right. So you have negative four. Okay? And the graph looks like this. So it has a horizontal asymptote or of y equals negative 4, which is actually that. Okay? The domain of any exponential function, because it goes to negative infinity here, it goes to positive infinity here, doing it horizontally, then the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, now the range is looking at your graph vertically. So you do vertical observation of your graph. Starts at negative 4, but it does not include negative 4 because this is an asymptote. So therefore, it will not intersect the, this, this line. So therefore, your range is going up and it extends to positive infinity. Okay, we'll go to the next. Now, what about this? So, again, we will graph this. Okay, y equals negative. Now, for logarithms, you go to miscellaneous. Uh, if you have a base, you need to type this. If not, you need to type this. We don't have, so we put this here. So, x minus 5. And as you can see, your graph is asymptotic to x equals 5, and it has a vertical asymptote. So, if you're going to graph this, all right, so the graph looks like this. Okay? And the vertical asymptote is x equals 5. Now, you're trying to find the end behavior as x approaches a constant. And in our case, it's actually at 5. So your x is approaching 5. Okay? And what about your y, which is your f of x? Your y is looking at your graph vertically, and as you can see, as x is approaching 5, it approaches positive infinity, okay? So therefore, this is positive infinity not here, all right? Because it extends infinitely out there. Now, how do we know if it's here? If your graph looks like this, okay? But if your graph looks like this, like that, it approaches negative infinity, Okay, th this one is approaching positive infinity instead. All right, now let's uh, look at piecewise functions. So first is uh, you're asked to find what's the range. Okay, the range is looking at your graph vertically. All right, the domain is, we'll do the do domain too. All right, so that's just in case you know how to find the domain. Now, whenever you use a piecewise function, you're asked to find the domain and range, you have to make use of a union, all right? Because it's a union of pieces. So we will start here from the one that covers your y. And as you can see, it starts with positive one and it includes it. If this is a circle, then I have to make use of a parenthesis. But be because this is a dot, I will use a bracket. So it starts at one, all right? And from this graph, it, it ends with 4. Okay, so put 4, close the bracket. Uh, both 1 and 4 are included in the graph. And then you can see that there's a gap between uh, the first graph and the second graph. It's a point gap between them. And it's supposed to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the second graph starts with 5. And it ends up with 6 and 7. Okay? So it's a union of 
5 and 7. That's actually our range. Now, just in case I will consider some domain, I'm going to put like this in order for you to find out how the domain also is, is uh, done. All right. The domain is, is looking at your graph horizontally. All right. So first, you have this first piece from the left. You have to take your piece from left to right. The first piece is from negative 5 to negative 2. And you have three pieces. The second piece is from negative 3 to positive 2. Okay? And the third piece is from uh, positive 2 to positive 5. Sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm sorry. So that will be union of 2 to 6. So that will be the domain of the function. Okay? Now we will go to continuity. Now, when functions are continuous, all right, it means that if I will graph the function, I will not leave a finger, all right? The graphs are connected with each other. So therefore, these two pieces are equal, all right? So that means x cubed minus 6x squared plus kx minus 6 is equal to 2x minus 13 plus k because the, it says that it is continuous. Therefore, uh, f of x1 is equal to f of x2. That's the meaning of that, okay? Means y1 is equal to y2. And the value of x is the break point, which you can see that appears in both your inequality. So we call this the break point. It can be a hole or it can be a dot. Okay? Remember in the piecewise, if it's whole, it's undefined out there. Now, since your x is 4, all right, we can plug in 4 here and we can solve for k. All right? Let's do that. So, your x is 4, we plug in the value here, plus k times 4 minus 6 is equal to 2 times 4 minus 13 plus k. Okay, now we will simplify our values. 4 cubed is 64. Minus, this is 16, times 6 is 96. Okay, plus 4K minus 6 is equal to 8 minus 13 plus K. Now we will combine like terms. This, this, and this. All together, that's negative 102. You can use calculator, don't hesitate to do that, all right? So this is negative 102 plus 64 is like around 38, negative, okay? Plus 4K is equal to negative 5 plus K. Okay, so this is a linear equation. So you add 38 on both sides of the equation. You get that. And you have 4K is equal to 33 plus K. And then, of course, you will subtract K on both sides of the equation. All right? And then you have 3K equals 33. And we will divide by 3. And so, therefore, K is 11. You can actually use calculator too. But... Uh, whenever you do that, just plug in your x to 4, and then after that, make k as your x. I also taught you how to do it, to it, to do it like that. I can show you too, all right, while you're copying. Where are you? All right, so what we can do here, Go to y equals, all right, put 4 to 3 to, four, to x minus 6 times, 6 times 4 square plus instead of k, you use x times 4 minus 6. This is how to use the calculator. Plug in your x. And then y equals 
2 times 4, okay, minus 13 plus x. Okay, and then after that, you need to find the point of intersection, and as you can see, I got 11. You can also do that if you want. But of course, you need to understand how this works by doing the theory that if, if uh, pieces of uh, piecewise are continuous, the value that these pieces should be equal because the values of x and y should be the same. The idea of composition is working backwards. All right? The meaning of this is that your x is supposed to be g of x. All right? So that means your x in f is g of x. This is how I put it. That's not really the x value, but this is your f of x. All right? So that means if I have f of x equals x squared minus 4, I will replace x with 3x plus 5. Okay? So that means this becomes 3x plus 5 squared minus 4. Now remember, this is always given in college. I remember. Do not... Um, do not square 3x and then square 5. 3x plus 5 square means 3x plus 5 times 3x plus 5. So you need to follow the method here. Okay, so you have 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times 5 is 15x. And then you have 5 times 3x is also 15x. Then 5 times 5 is 25. So what you have here now is 9x squared plus 30x, plus 25, minus 4. Then, of course, you combine like terms. That's 9x squared, plus 30x, plus 21. That's the answer. If you're using calculator, just compose it like this and find the graph that will cover this, this equation. You actually don't need to simplify. Okay, that's how you do it in the calculator if you have options. Okay, now go to the next. I'll put this back later. Okay. Next one is uh, tables and graphs. I have given graphs too, so you should know how to do it. Okay, remember the idea. Again, it's working backwards. All right? So if I have f of g of 0, it means that we need to find g of 0 first. And g of 0 here means that your x is 0. So you have to look at g, and this is g, and then look for 0, and this is 0 here. So therefore, your y is equal to 3. Okay, next. Since I'm, I'm composing it with f, I will have now to go to f. And therefore, this one becomes now your x in f. All right? So this means that this time around, your x is 3 at f. So I will have to use 3 here, which is that. So therefore, y is 10. Therefore, the answer here is 10. Get that? It's not as difficult. You just have to remember the idea of a composition. It's working backwards. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is the last one. For composition, again, this is the same as, uh, if you see this, this is the same as G of F of X. They're actually the same. All right. Again, working backwards. That's the meaning of this. So first, we need to find what's function of negative 3. And our equation is X squared minus 10. All right. Where x is negative 3, don't forget to put uh, negative 3 in the parentheses. I'm always emphasizing that because it's a common mistake of students. Otherwise, this will give you negative 19 when it's supposed to be negative 1. All right? Next, right now, you will have to look for g of negative 1. So you will have to use the y of f as x in g. And our g is 4x, negative 4x 
minus 7. And our x here is negative 1. All right? And so therefore, you will have 4 minus 7. This gives you negative 3. Not because this is a negative 3, but it's really negative 3 when we solve it. Okay? You can also make use of calculator for this. Okay? But let's, let's show the calculator work for this. So the first thing you should do is to write f of x equals x squared minus 10. And then your g of x, I have a video of this, how to use uh, composition on Desmos, is negative 4x minus 7. And then all you have to do is to compose it at g of f of, of negative 3. And we should be able to, be, to get negative 3, it's the same. All right? Now I need to stop the video. Okay, all of the equations for circular are given. You don't need to find them. By the way, there are also exponential functions, but I already gave the formula. So all you need to do is to understand. Okay, so the rays of the sun shining over Wallace is given by this function. Distance in miles as function of time in minutes. Now remember, x is always a function of time, and y is a function of distance. All right? So it depends on what you will plug in in the value just in case you wanted to solve uh, the problem. How many minutes? So it means we're looking for T. All right? And our Y is 13. You get that? So therefore, we just have equation Y equals 14 minus 5 cosine of 0.25 x oops all right plus 1.5 okay and by the way because we are using circular functions we should be in the radian mode okay and so therefore the other is y equals 13 okay and we need to find the points of intersection there's a negative here but we will choose the positive, okay? If, for example, there are two, uh, you, you need to prioritize only two points of intersection from zero, okay? So the first time is at uh, 14, 14 minutes, okay? Like 13.7 minutes if you round it off to the nearest hundreds place. So the time is after 13.7 minutes. Okay, the coverage of the sun will be about 13 miles, okay, after 13 minutes of sunshine or 13.7 minutes of sunshine. That's the meaning of the problem. Now, we will go to the next one. How much, oh, how much far has the sun, okay, that's correct. How much far has the sun covers uh, Wallace after 12 minutes? Uh, pardon my grammar, but I'm trying to find how many miles has been uh, covered by the sun after 12 minutes? That's the meaning of that. So therefore, our time is 12, which means our x. Okay? So we will go back to our graph here. And we just have to change our x by 12. And the answer is about 15.1 miles. So it means that after the sun has shone for 12 minutes, okay, the coverage of the sunshine is about 15 miles. That's the meaning of that. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Okay, how to find the vertical shift? But of course, you can always graph the function in order for you to find some of them it's easier so y equals 12 minus 7 cosine uh, pi over 4 x 
minus 2. All right? So from the graph, you can easily find the minimum and the maximum, and that's 5 and 19. And the range then becomes your 5 and 19. Okay? Now the vertical shift is your movement from 0. That will be from here to here. And as you can see, uh, from the midline to, to the top of it, and as you can see, the vertical shift is the, is the standalone number here. And so therefore, this is 12. So that's the standalone number. This will also give you the midline. So you see, if I'm going to graph this, that's why it's the movement from 0 to the midline of your graph. And that's equivalent to y equals 12. Now, the amplitude is 7 because that's the distance from here to the top. And it's also that number beside the function, so that's 7. And it's also your vertical shift, uh, vertical stretch. So the graph is stretched by a factor of 7. All right. Now, we will go to phase shift. Phase shift is negative C over B. Okay, this is your B and this is your C. But because it's negative C, you need to change the sign. From negative 2, you will use positive 2. Okay? And then your B is pi over 4. And then, of course, because we're dividing fractions, we need to reciprocate pi over 4. It becomes 4 over pi. And so you will have 8 over pi. So it means that the graph has moved to the right side by 8 over pi, because the phase shift is the same as the horizontal shift. Okay? Now we will go to the period. All right. The period is given by, I'll put it here, I don't have space, 2 pi over b. Okay? Our b is pi over 4. And so you need to flip that. And so it gives you 2 pi times 4 over pi. And so it gives us 8. In a Ferris wheel, it means that uh, the Ferris wheel will have a complete rotation after 8 seconds. You get that? Okay, the radius of the Ferris wheel is 7. The maximum height uh, a rider can reach is 719. All right? Now, let's go here find age of t when t is 3. So all we need to do is to change this with 3. And the answer is 7.05. Okay? Then, this is a question is, uh, how, how many seconds have passed when the rider is about 15 feet above the ground? That's the meaning of that question. Okay? So that means we need to put 15 here, and we have to go back to x. And then we find the point of intersection, choose the first two. So that's 4.6 and 7.4, because there are two locations on which a rider has the same distance from the ground. So therefore, there are two times on which the rider will be uh, far apart from the ground. And that would be after uh, 4.6 seconds and 7.4 seconds. Okay? That's about circular functions. So first is we should know where is the north, where is the south. It's important. I think everybody knows that. Maybe not me. <laughs> We're not using uh, compass in the Philippines. But it's north, south, uh, east, west. Okay, so that's the first move for this. It says the pilot flies a plane that takes off from an airport and travels due west for 12 miles. All right? And then, of course, is it positive or negative? Negative, negative because it goes west. And then from that position, it goes to the north by 20 miles. And, of course, that's positive. It goes up. Now, the problem is asking us, what is the resultant of the flight? So it's going to be from this point to that. That's the resultant out there. So therefore, we form a right triangle here. That means we have to make use of the Pythagorean theorem. 
So there are two things in a, in a resultant. It should have a magnitude and direction. So we need, we need the length of the resultant and the angle it makes with the, with the vertical. We need this. All right? But the calculator will always give you the angle in standard position. That means it gives you this. All right? So let's go ahead and uh, solve first for the magnitude. And the magnitude is given by, remember the symbol? The square root of uh, 20 square plus negative 12 square. Okay, now this is important when you put this in the calculator. If it's negative, you have to enclose it in parentheses. That's 20 square. If it's positive, that's fine, but the negative terms should be put inside the parentheses, okay, and put the square outside. So that will be 23.32. Uh, is it miles? So this is the magnitude of our flight, okay? That's how far it is. Now we will find the direction, now if you still remember, the direction is given by tangent negative one, y over x. And our y is the vertical distance and x is our horizontal distance, so it's vertical. And by the way, remember the tangent is also the slope. Okay, you will study this in calculus. The tangent of a certain function is actually the slope of a line, that's actually the uh, slope of that, this one, the slope of this diagonal line. So that's vertical over horizontal, okay? So tangent raised to negative one, that's 20 over negative 12. Now this time around, since we are using a triangle, okay, our mode should be in degree. You get that? Triangle is for degrees, Circle is for radian. So, we will have to make use of inverse tan. Okay, 20 divided by negative 12. And it gives us negative 59 degrees. This negative 59 is actually this. For bearing, okay, our bearing should always come from the north-south line. So therefore, the last part, you still remember resultant magnitude and vector? I have a video of that. It's 90 minus 59. This is the last step, and it gives us 31 degrees. And the direction is northwest. Okay, so therefore, our resultant vector is equal to uh, 23.32 at 31 degrees northwest. That's the resultant of our uh, flight, okay? So the steps here, of course, you need to draw. And then after that, find the magnitude, use the Pythagorean. In this case, it's Pythagorean. In some other cases, you have to, will have to make use of sine law or cosine law. But because we are using right triangle, it should be Pythagorean. And of course, the last one is make use of the inverse tan. And then after that, subtract from 90. Okay, that's how to do our resultant vector all in all. You're asked to find uh, the domain and range of this. And because uh, the graph is not explicitly given, we need to graph it first. Okay, so let's go to the Desmos graphing calculator and graph it. So, I really make an emphasis of this because of the exponent. If you have an exponent that's more than two terms or more than one term, you need to put them in parentheses like that, okay, minus four. And so this is the graph, let's, uh, y equals negative four. So if you graph it, all right, so you have negative four, okay, and the graph looks like this. So it has a horizontal asymptote or of y equals negative four, which is actually that, okay? The domain of 
any exponential function because it goes to negative infinity here, it goes to positive infinity here, doing it horizontally. Then the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay? Now, the range is looking at your graph vertically. So, you do vertical observation of your graph. Starts at negative 4, but it does not include negative 4 because this is an asymptote. So, therefore, it will not intersect the, this, this line. So, therefore, your range is going up and it extends to positive infinity. Okay? We'll go to the next. Now, what about this? So, again, we will graph this. Okay, y equals negative. Now, for logarithms, you go to miscellaneous. Uh, if you have a base, you need to type this. If not, you need to type this. We don't have, so we put this here. So, x minus 5. And as you can see, your graph is asymptotic to x equals 5, and it has a vertical asymptote. So, if you're going to graph this, all right, so the graph looks like this. Okay? And the vertical asymptote is x equals 5. Now, you're trying to find the end behavior as x approaches a constant. And in our case, it's actually at 5. So your x is approaching 5. Okay? And what about your y, which is your f of x? Your y is looking at your graph vertically, and as you can see, as x is approaching 5, it approaches positive infinity, okay? So therefore, this is positive infinity not here, all right? Because it extends infinitely out there. Now, how do we know if it's here? If your graph looks like this, okay? But if your graph looks like this, like that, it approaches negative infinity. Okay, th this one is approaching positive infinity instead.